What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to set up the scale in Revit and how to print the, then your whole model in scale or how to export it to PDF and then you can take that PDF to the printers and they can print it up for you. But before I get started, I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out a lot. And if you haven't already, I suggest you subscribe because I make tutorials like this every day. And follow me on social media, I post there as well. Links are in the description. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to be using this studio apartment uh, project that, that I've done. And if you want to check this uh, tutorial out, uh, again, I'm going to be leaving the link in the description. It's a cool little uh, studio apartment. But anyway, let's uh, let's try to scale this and then export that to uh, to PDF. And uh, let me add a dimension to this uh, just to show you the difference when scaling comes to uh, comes to mind. So let's add uh, just a dimension for this wall and this wall as well. Maybe this wall. Okay, so we've got some dimensions over here, and as you can see, the scale is now one to one hundred. Uh, but if we change the scale to say 1 to 50, uh, the, these uh, little dimensions will change. So that's the important part about this annotation. Uh, it's, it's scale dependent. So as you change the scale, uh, the, these, uh, these annotations will change as well. And uh, let me just go back to 1 to 100. And let's say you want to change the scale, but you don't have an option over here. Let's say we want to do 1 to 75. And as you can see, we don't have anything over here. So the easiest way to do is either to go to custom here or maybe go here to the properties panel for the floor plan when nothing is selected. And just for the view scale, uh, open up this drop menu and you search here custom. And when you set this to custom, you get this uh, scale value and you can change this to, uh, I don't know, like 75 and hit apply and then it will change or you can go here to custom and then you'll get this whole different uh, custom uh, dialog and you can actually change the scale name if you want and it can be actually different than the ratio i don't know why would you do that but anyway that's an option nevertheless okay so we've got a correct scale so what we need to do now is we need to set this on a sheet uh, and to do that, let's create a new sheet. So you've got this uh, sheets dialog over here or sheets button on your project browser. And you just right click on that and you've got this new sheet option. And as you can see, I've only got this uh, A1 metric option and that's it. I don't have anything else. So let me load a, another sheet or a title block. And this is what we have. And if you're in, uh, you're usually going to get something like this. So I like to choose metric library. Then I like to go here to title blocks. And then you've got your uh, title blocks. Uh, now, because this is a small, uh, small floor block, Plan. I'll, I'm just going to choose a four metric. That's the smallest one. And then you can go just open and uh, just go OK once that's selected. And this is what you get. And, and now you just kind of select the, the level and you just drag it over. So let me just drag this over. And when I place it, as you can see, it's way too large. And what's the problem? Well, the problem is the that Revit is basically uh, grabbing the whole uh, model and it's actually grabbing these uh, these annotation symbols for your elevations and that's uh, and it's using that for the boundary of your uh, of your floor plan uh, but you usually don't need to place these so uh, a way to fix that is either go in uh, level one and kind of bring those in a bit so if you want to present them but you don't want to have your uh, model be uh, well too large or your floor plan to be too large just bring it in a bit and then if we go back into sheets open this sheet up as you can see now this is uh, way way closer uh, but again I like to leave these out so how do you fix that uh, well you go back into level one and uh, you go over here you scroll down a bit until you find extents and then you check crop view and crop region uh, visible and hit apply so you get this little uh, crop region uh, line so you can kind of move it in and uh, basically grab your whole floor plan and let's make it even smaller. Uh, now, if you don't want to transform, uh, transport this 
this kind of a rectangle to your a sheet then you just uncheck this crop region visible so it's still making the crop but you can see it so and you just turn it on when you want to edit it maybe you want to grab this as well but you get the point so you just uncheck that to so you don't have to see it now if we go back into our sheet as you can see this now updated but if we select it our uh, our level or our name line is uh, or title line is way down here that's because we started off with this uh, big view so if i select this and just delete it and then go back into level one and uh, drag it over as you can see now it will be significantly smaller and uh, you can actually select uh, this thing and move it around so you can select it maybe place it like i don't know like that or select when you select this, you can only move it around, but if you want to edit it, you need to select the whole thing. I don't know why does it do work like that. It's it's stupid, it's annoying, but that's the way you have to do it. And you get here the name, and of course if we change the name here, rename it, I don't know, A, B, C, hit enter. Yes, this will update as well. And the same thing goes if you change the scale. The scale will update. Now, you might want to uh, write down the, the name of the drawing as well as the scale somewhere else, or maybe you don't want to have it at all. So you can just select this whole thing and go over here and type in no title and you'll lose the title. Or uh, you can select it and type in uh, no title line. So you just get the name and the scale, but in my opinion, it looks... I don't know, it looks silly, it doesn't look right, so I, I prefer to have yeah, just either nothing or uh, the whole thing with the line. But anyway, that that is as far as the setting up the scale and positioning everything on a title block. Now let's uh, export this to PDF or print if you have a printer attached to your computer, then it's even easier for you. So you just go here to file and you find print and you just select that print and here if you have a printer you would go here and select that printer of yours i don't have one so i'm just going to choose adobe pdf so this will this will mean that it will export to pdf and you go here and uh, this is where you set up your location so you just go to browse and you can uh, just uh, select the location where you want to save your file and leave this at current uh, window and now we need to add a setup settings. So you just go to setup settings and here for the name, again, I'm just going to leave it default. Uh, for paper size, I'm going to go and select the same paper I have and set it to portrait. So portrait means it's vertical, landscape means it's horizontal. So make sure that you set it up to the same uh, proportions you have here on screen for your paper. For the raster quality, I just like to leave it at high. Uh, colors, I'm going to leave the colors on. Uh, if you, I have, well, I have this little color over here and I can change it to either grayscale or black lines. And uh, now the, different, the difference is uh, grayscale uh, basically means that you have shades of gray and black. So this would basically be black and white. And uh, black lines means it reduces all color to black lines of different thicknesses. But I like to leave it with color. And then here we've got fit to page, and uh, now you can use this, but I prefer to zoom it to 100%. I, I think it's a bit more precise. I don't exactly know what the computer does when it fits it to the page. Of course, if you just want to fit it to page and you don't care about scale, leave it at that. But if you care about scale, you want to have it in perfect scale, I suggest you use zoom and then 100%. And yeah, that's pretty much it, uh, what you need to do. And here, yeah, uh, for the vector processing versus uh, raster processing, I prefer vector processing. It uh, gives you those uh, nice vector lines. That's what I prefer to have. And just hit OK. And now you can just hit here for the preview. This is what you get. And then you go back into print if you're uh, happy with how this turned out. So you just go back to print and hit OK, and now you're going to get your file location, you hit save, and that's it, you're done. You get your PDF file that you can take to printers or you can email to your client, your professor, whomever needs to see this, uh, this project of yours. 
But anyway, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you have learned something new about setting scale and printing out of Revit. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for any future tutorials, please make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.